On the Configuration menu, on the Compliance submenu, click Policies. On the Policies page, in the Compliance Policies list, click Create Compliance Policy. In the Create Compliance Policy dialog box, in the title field, type a straightforward policy name. And in the description field, type a brief explanation of the use of the policy. To save the policy, click Create. The system saves the policy and adds it to the Compliance Policies list. The policy is now available to add rules. Important note, Compliance Policies must include one rule and can include as many rules as you need to perform a specific audit. To begin adding rules on the toolbar, click New. The system opens the New Rule dialog box, which provides a wizard to step you through the process. In the Rule Title field, type a straightforward name for the rule. In the Description field, type a brief explanation of the configuration evaluation that the rule performs. In the Impact field, indicate how the network might be affected if the device configuration or output does not meet the rule or rules in the policy. In the Suggested Fix field, recommend how to correct the issue so that the device returns to a state of compliance. Tip: The rule that you are adding can contain fix CLI commands that correct the problem. In these cases, when you are recommending corrections in the Suggested Fix field, you also can describe the corrective CLI commands contained in the rule, which can help system users determine whether to take the corrective action. To continue, click Next. The wizard opens the platform selection page. In the available platforms list, select each device type that you want the rule to audit. Important note, during auditing, the system applies the rule to and audits those devices that match the platforms that you select here, regardless of the types of devices that you select for an audit when configuring a profile. Refer to the job aid for a detailed example on addressing platforms and rules. When configuring policies, to continue, click Next. The wizard opens the Rule Inputs page. Rule inputs are optional. When you add rule inputs at this point, users have the option to define the input values when configuring profiles or running fixed jobs based on the rule inputs scope. If you do not include rule inputs here, the option to define values in the profile or fixed job is not available. In this scenario, you are adding a rule that provides the parameter that defines the access control list name that the audit needs to find in the configuration. To add the rule, on the toolbar, click New. The New Rule Input dialog box opens. In the title field, type a straightforward name for the rule that communicates its use. Beside the identifier field, click Generate. The system populates the identifier field with a unique, correctly formatted identifier. In the description field, type a brief explanation of the role input configuration. In the scope drop down list, accept the default selection of execution, which configures the system to apply the parameters to the conditions and to the fixed CLI commands. In the data type drop down list, select string which controls the input syntax. To require the user to provide a value for the rule input, select the Input Required checkbox. In the Default Value field, type the parameter that the system will look for in the configuration by default. To see how the rule will appear in the Compliance Profile, click Preview. The Rule Input Previewer dialog box opens and displays the rule, which is available for editing if changes are necessary. When you make changes to the rule input, here, the system applies the change to the rule. To continue, click OK. To continue, click OK.
The rule inputs page lists the rule that you defined. With the rule input defined, click Next. The wizard opens the conditions and actions page. In this scenario, we are adding four condition and action statements so that while auditing each configuration, the system parses each device's running configuration into interface blocks. In each configuration block, determines whether the block has an IP address. In each block with an IP address, determines whether the configuration includes the access control list name, and that, if it does not, the system reports a violation. And, in each running configuration that includes the correct access control list, determines whether the access control list itself is configured in each device's running configuration, and that, if it is not, the system reports a violation. To add the first statement, on the toolbar, click New. The New Conditions and Actions dialog box opens. You indicate the scope, method, and conditions that comprise the audit criteria on the Condition Details tab. In the Conditions Scope Details section, in the Condition Scope drop down list, accept the default selection of Configuration, which defines that the condition applies to the device's running configuration. To indicate that you want the system to parse the configuration into interface blocks, in the Block Options section, select the Parse as Blocks checkbox. In the Block Start Expression field, type the regular expression that indicates the start of each interface block. In the Condition Match Criteria section, in the Operator drop down list, select the operator that the condition uses for comparison during the audit. In the Value field, Type the parameter that the condition will use for comparison. With the condition defined, click the Action Details tab. On the Action Details tab, indicate the actions that the system takes when the test results indicate that a configuration matches or does not match the test criteria. In the Select Action drop down list, accept the default selection for the system to continue the audit when the interface condition matches the expression parameter. In the Select Does Not Match Action section, select Does Not Raise a Violation, so that the system does not generate a violation message when the audit does not find an interface. To save the statement, click OK. The dialog box closes and the statement that you added appears in the Conditions and Actions list. To add the next statement, click New. The condition in this statement determines that for the blocks in condition 1 that indicated interfaces, whether those extracted interfaces have IP addresses. And the action on the statement is that the system will continue the audit when interfaces have IP addresses. And when interfaces do not have IP addresses, the system will not generate a violation message. To save the statement, click OK. With the second statement added, click New. To add the next statement. In this statement, the condition evaluates each parsed block to determine if it contains the permit core traffic access group name, which is the default value that you typed in the rule input. And the action on this statement is that the system will continue the audit when interface blocks have the permit core traffic access group name. When the system determines that the permit core traffic Access group name is not in the interface block, the system reports a critical violation for that interface due to the significant security risk and includes a custom description of the issue. In this case, you are including the fix CLI commands that can configure the access group name on the interface. When the operator evaluates the results of the audit job and sees this violation, he or she can determine whether to send the fix CLI commands to the non-compliant interface by using a fixed job in an effort to correct the problem. Important note, in this scenario, we are illustrating the use of grep in the violation message text and the fix CLI commands to replace the variable 1.1 with actual values. In this case, the interface name will replace the variable. For more information on using grep, Refer to the FAQ in the associated job aid.
with the third statement added. Click New to add the next statement. In this statement, the condition verifies that, in each device's running configuration, the permit core traffic access control list itself is configured. And the action on the statement is that the system will continue the audit when the permit core traffic access control list itself is configured. When the system determines that the permit core traffic access control list is in the interface block, but the list itself is not configured, the system reports a major violation for that interface because it continues to pose a security risk and includes a custom description of the issue. In this case, you are including the fix CLI commands that can configure the access control list itself. Then, when evaluating audit results, the operator can determine whether to send the fix CLI commands to any non-compliant running configuration by using a fixed job in an effort to correct the problem. With the statements that define the audit criteria complete, click Save to save the rule in the system. The system lists the rule for the ACL on interface policy. With the custom policy configured, you are ready to configure the security profile. On the configuration menu, on the compliance submenu, click Profiles. This action opens the Profiles page. In this scenario, you, as a network operator, need to perform a security audit on network interfaces. You want to configure a profile that performs the security validation that you need in a single audit job. To do so, you configure a profile that includes the custom ACL on interface policy, which audits whether device interface configurations include a specific access control list. The system provided CDP policy, which audits whether the Cisco Discovery Protocol is disabled on each device. And the system provided hostname policy, which audits whether each device is configured with a hostname. To begin, in the Compliance Profiles list, click Create Policy Profile. In the Create Policy Profile dialog box, in the title field, type a straightforward name so that others can recognize its use. In the description field, type a brief explanation of the use of the policy, and then click Create. The system saves the policy and adds it to the Compliance Profiles list. With the profile generated, you can configure and add policies to the profile. In the Compliance Profiles list, ensure that the policy is selected. In the Compliance Policy Selector section, on the toolbar, click Add. The Add Compliance Policies dialog box opens and lists categories of system-defined policies. It also provides the User-Defined category, which lists all of the custom policies that system users have added. To add policies to the profile, expand each applicable category, select each policy that you want and then, click OK. The Compliance Policy Selector section lists the policies that you selected. For the security profile in this scenario, the ACL on interface policy, which is the policy that a network administrator defined, will audit for, access control list, compliance. Permit core traffic, which is the default parameter in the policy, is the name of the access control list for which you are auditing device configurations, so you accept the default value. The system defined CDP policy will audit whether the Cisco Discovery Protocol is in a disabled state on each device. The system defined hostname policy will audit to determine whether each device configuration includes a hostname. Tip, when you make changes, you must click Save to apply the changes to the policy. With the policy configured, you can run the configuration audit. In the Compliance Profiles list, select the profile that you want the audit to run, and then, on the toolbar, click Run Compliance Audit. The system opens the Compliance Audit dialog box and displays the device selection page. In the list, 
expand each category that contains the devices that you want to include, and then select those devices, types, or groups. Important note, regardless of the devices that you select here, the system audits only those devices that meet the platform criteria that is defined in the system default policy or that a system user defined when configuring a custom policy. Select the configuration that you want to audit. Important note, when auditing current configurations, the system pulls each device and then performs the audit, which can potentially affect system response. In this case, accept the default selection of Use latest archived configuration, which avoids latency issues, and then click Next. On the schedule page, change the job name. Tip Changing the job name can help make the type of audit more recognizable to other users when they review the list of completed audits on the jobs page. To start the job immediately, accept the default selection of Now. To start the audit job, click Finish. With the job running, you can evaluate the audit results when the job finishes. On the Configuration menu, on the Compliance submenu, click Jobs. The Jobs page opens the Audit Jobs tab by default. On the tab, the system displays the job status, which indicates a running state until it completes. On completion, the status changes to indicate the overall audit result in a link. To review the detailed results, click the link. The Compliance Audit Violation Details dialog box opens the Job Details and Violation Summary page. In the summary, the ACL on interface policy is reporting two critical violations which are based on the policy settings. The dialog box provides a wizard and includes the Fix CLI commands that a system user configured in the policy. Because of the critical security issue that the missing access control list causes, you want to correct the interface configurations immediately. To determine the device interfaces requiring correction and schedule the fixed job, click Next. The Violations by Device page lists all of the devices reporting violations. In the list, expand each category that contains the device interfaces reporting violations and select the interfaces that you want to correct. Then, click Next. The Preview Fix Commands page lists the devices containing non-compliant interfaces. Expand the device name and select the policy to review the commands that the fixed job will send to the non-compliant interfaces. Click Next. On the schedule page, name the fixed job descriptively. Because the violations are critical, start the job immediately. To start the process, click Schedule Fixed Job. The system displays a message confirming that the fixed job is scheduled. To evaluate the fixed job results, navigate to the Fixed Jobs tab. On the Fixed Jobs tab, validate that the fixed job completes successfully. To review the job results, click the link. The Compliance Fixed Details dialog box opens and indicates a successful result. To review the commands that the fixed job sent to the non-compliant interfaces in the status column, click the Success link. The View Violation Fixed Details dialog box opens and lists each violation. Click the Option button beside a violation message to review the code that the fixed job sent. When you complete your review, close each dialog box. To validate that the device has returned to a compliant state, you next rerun the audit job and evaluate the results. Navigate to the Profiles page. Find and select the audit that you ran previously, and then, on the toolbar, click Run Compliance Audit. In the Compliance Audit dialog box, on the Device Selection page, Select the device with the interface that the fixed job corrected. Because the fixed job corrected the device's running configuration, click Use Current Device Configuration. 
name the audit descriptively, and accept the default selection of, now, to run the job immediately. To run the audit, click, finish. Return to the jobs page, and review the results of the second audit job, by clicking the link. In the Compliance Audit Details dialog box, verify that all of the policies listed, indicate a compliance state, by displaying a green indicator. And then, to close the dialog box, click, OK. With the Compliance Audit Details displaying a green indicator, in the Compliance State column, for all of the policies that you expect to run without reporting failures, you have completed this scenario to, audit device interfaces and, ensure that they have returned to compliance.